Obsidian has a new full-time CEO. Those of you inside the community will probably be familiar with Capano. They have developed the minimal theme and they recently announced as of four days ago on Reddit that they are going to be the new CEO of the Obsidian application. Silver and Lycat launched Obsidian back in 2020 and Capano was one of the earlier developers that started joining in and helping out with some of the functionality and has actually been behind the scenes for quite a while now. But even with this big step up for Capano, Silver and Lycat aren't going anywhere. And if anything, it's actually the opposite because Silver and Lycat can now get back to building up the product and building up the community, which is why they started in the first place. Alongside Capano's contributions to the Obsidian 1.0 update and the minimal theme, he's also had 20 years of previous experience building companies, which is obviously very useful being a CEO. And the plan is for Obsidian to still be free for personal use, built on durable and opal file formats without lock-in, private offline first and end-to-end -end encrypted files, remaining endlessly customizable via API and plugins. And they are also looking to keep it 100% user supported so no investors from other people compromising any of the Obsidian values the company has. I think this is an exciting step for Obsidian. If you do have any questions, Capano's on Reddit, Discord, and I actually used the Twitter thread to find some of the questions that I was curious about because people had already asked, so I'm sure he's open to answering anything you have. I want to add and expand on this in an unscripted way, so I don't really know what I'm going to say. I'm going to just going to say it. Um, Obsidian, to me, is not only a tool, but the thing that I use every day. Like, I'm on Obsidian most of the time of my day, whether it's on my phone or whether it's on the computer or on my laptop. So it's not like I live on it and I require it, but it's certainly a big part in the way that I live my life. Even outside of research, I use it for football and managing who turned up to training, who didn't turn up to training, uh, notes for what's for dinner later, for shopping lists. All those sorts of things are also done on Obsidian. And I think Obsidian is seen as the outs from like outsiders not inside of this world is a very complicated code heavy complex tool which it can be if you make it you can make it as complex as you want you can add javascript queries and loads of other complicated integration stuff with apis and insert loads of tech jargon but uh, i don't care <laughs> like when you actually look at my vault i've done the 2023 vault tour it's i think i have 15 plugins now that sounds like a lot but when you think about Notion and its features, every feature is essentially a plugin inside of Obsidian, sort of like a bit of translation there. So when you look at Notion's feature set and Obsidian's plugins, yes, there are more features and more plugins in Obsidian, but you can turn them off. So you can turn off literally everything in Obsidian so it's just a file and folder system, which I also use Obsidian for. Notion, you can't turn them off. You have to ignore them. So to me, I don't see plugins is making it more complicated unless you want to unless you want to make it more complicated that's my opinion obviously that's a biased opinion having said that though i do think plugins make it more complicated in that some people come in thinking they need all of the plugins or they want all of the plugins or they want to use all of these different things when they really don't need to and how do we, as educators, learners, people in the community, just sharing information about Obsidian, help people avoid that, that pitfall, that trap of going, I need all the plugins? I think it's the same with Notion. I was looking recently on Twitter and Hayden Hellier, who's an editor on YouTube, for those not in the space, don't worry about it, but they were getting into Notion. I want to get into Notion, what template am I going to use? And I think in the Notion space, templates are just awful for using when you were, when you start using the tool. Great for ideas and inspiration, but just adopting a template and using it straight out of the straight out of the pack or the bucket, whatever you want to say, is very difficult and complicated because you don't know how it works, you don't know why it's built that way, you don't know what you can change, etc. etc. And the list goes on. And having been a Notion user in the past for about three years, I saw loads of people go into Notion using templates, getting confused and either leaving it, getting behind, getting lost or having to pay for someone to help them understand the tool. And Obsidian doesn't have that yet, but the plugin I think is similar to the template world. And I want to, hair in my mouth, I want to try and avoid that inside of Obsidian and not tell people use this plugin and use that plugin. So a bit of self-reflection on me, my recap videos have been to help those inside of the Obsidian community understand sort of what's coming out and reflection on, on my part was actually I, I'm probably doing more harm than good. Maybe. This is me, reflection. Um, 
probably doing more harm than good because I'm telling people, hey, look at this plugin, look at that plugin, basically saying, here's loads of shiny new toys, go play. But I don't want people to play. Like the intention was to say, here's this thing, if, you, if it's useful for you, go use it. If not, don't bother. But if they didn't know about it in the first place, ignorance is bliss. And that's where I think, looking at what Liam's done in becoming CEO, I think Lycat and, oh, wow, what's the other person? Silver. Uh, Lycat and Silver, they built this app. They built an amazing app. And they had these other responsibilities that they were doing. And they've gone, you know what? I just want to get back to what it is that I'm good at, they're good at, or what what it is that they want to do. And Liam's now sort of stepping up into that role. For me, I don't have a team. I am me. But Obsidian is something I use and it's something I do. And content creation is something I enjoy. I like sharing what it is that I've learned and what I am learning. But what it is that I do every day is research. Most of you don't see the research that I do. I, I spend four four days a week just in research, in literature, in journals, in papers, in podcasts, in videos, researching topics about educational science. And I don't share any of that, but that's what I'm interested in the most because the views on YouTube don't work and the whole algorithm rubbish. Yeah, content creator. Not going to go down that rabbit hole anyway. So what I plan on doing moving forwards, taking a bit of inspiration from what Lycat and Silver have done, is I'm not going to abandon recaps and abandon sort of updates of what's going on in the Obsidian community, but abandon the, hey, here's loads of shiny new toys that you could use approach and look at more, not necessarily applicable, but more tangible updates for me. So if a plugin that I use is updated, then I may share it, but I want to share my research and my process of researching. So at the moment I'm researching AI writing and that's expanded from one research note to four essay notes. And there are now storylines behind each of those essays. And what I'm thinking of doing is sharing those process videos instead of the, Hey, here's loads of obsidian feature stuff. I said, I'd talk for like a couple of minutes. It's been six already almost. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's my question to you that watch. I can't imagine new viewers getting this far in the video, but if you are interested in obsidian or in research or the process that I use, let me know what you would prefer, whether you'd want uh, a recap video of, Hey, here's everything that goes out because I can still do those videos. I'm doing them now, but to me, as like a, as a, a viewer of content, I want to see how people work, not just what the things are, if that makes sense. The vault builds are different because they are using different tools collectively and how do you do combine that plugin, this plugin to make this workflow. They're different, I think. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about whether you'd want process videos. I've done polls before, but polls are not as useful as actually explaining what's going on. So process videos or recap videos, maybe a combination of the two, vault builds, like what would you be interested in seeing? Like what to you is valuable content, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, end, end of ramble. <laughs>